At Children's Miracle Network at Gunderson Health System, every child served has a story of courage and perseverance. These are their stories. I'm Sarah Kramer, uh, mom of Alexander. His primary diagnosis is chronic lung disease. Uh, he was diagnosed with that a few months after birth. Alex was um, a twin with his sister, and they were born at 25 weeks of gestation. So being a twin also contributed to his low birth weight. He was less than a pound when he was born. At about five months, they um, ended up in respiratory failure. Their underdeveloped and damaged lungs just couldn't support their growing body. He had a tracheostomy procedure where they implant a plastic trach into his esophagus and was put on a ventilator for long-term support. Sadly, Nora did not recuperate from that and she passed away at nine months. But Alexander seemed to turn the corner. Um, it was enough support and he slowly started to thrive. The drugs that supported his lungs um, when he was little took a toll on his growth, so things moved very, very slowly, but he, he progressed. And finally, at one year and three months, we were able to bring him home from the hospital. He was had his trach and ventilator and oxygen 24-7. He needed around-the-clock care to either move the vent with him around the house, um, it was way too heavy for him to move, and monitor vitals at night and respiratory treatments and things like that. The last four years have been filled with doctor's appointments, um, getting him to therapies to get him, get his strength built back up and work on his speech. Um, all of the developmental delays that he missed while he was in the hospital so long. So as he grows, a lot of the underlying conditions that related to his prematurity have fallen away. So his overall health just continues to improve along with his lung development. And thankfully, this past year, we have been very successful with weaning his vent support. And he is actually scheduled for his trach removal later this spring. That trach coming out is a big one, I guess, and just letting him go to the playground and run around like a normal little kid. Even though Alex has been through a lot, a pretty traumatic first year of life and, you know, in all these therapies over the years and, you know, getting caught up developmentally, he just has this energy for life, this contagious laugh, and he's just had a smile on his face through most of it. His laid back demeanor is, I don't know where he gets it from, but um, has, you know, really driven him through the worst of all of this. Uh, my name is Aaron MacArthur. Uh, my daughter is Cara MacArthur, and she has optic pathway gliomas, which are tumors that grow on her uh, optic nerves. I think she was about 18 months old. Uh, we noticed that her eyes would twitch quite a bit, so we took her in for her 18-month visit, um, and the doctor had referred us for an MRI. And came back same day, and we found out that she has the gliomas, which is a form of brain cancer. We went to pediatric oncology, hematology, and started working with Dr. Jen to come up with a plan of action for Cara and figure out what we were gonna do. And that we were gonna start chemo right away. So we went right into uh, surgery. She got her port put in. And then I wanna say about two weeks later, she started her, um, her chemo treatments. They went for about six months and the chemo wasn't working. Um, so we switched chemos again. We've been through a couple different treatments. We've been up to Rochester a couple times to talk to the specialists up there. Um, and we're hoping this third different chemo is much better results. Every 24 days, she has a one week cycle of her temozolomide, which we come in five days every day of that week. And she gets hooked up um, and gets her infusion over an hour and a half. So we're here for a whole week, every 24 days. Every so often they give us a gas card, which is really helpful because the drive back and forth, now that she comes once a day for a week, um, and then every other Friday, driving the mileage starts to get long, um, so that helps out a lot with gas. And then every morning she comes in, she wants her little tickets, so she gets meal tickets, 
Um, and then she goes out in the cafeteria and she can eat breakfast because chemo runs in from breakfast to lunch, so she kind of eats right in the middle. And then they also bought her her last pair of glasses because she's went through so many different ones and she changes her prescription so much that the glasses started to get really expensive. So CMN just bought her last pair of glasses. It helps everyone, the kids, the families of the kids. It just makes everything, everything for the family and especially the children uh, that much easier, that much better for them. So the times that they're going through it, they're rough, but they're at least enjoyable for them at some points. My name is Kristen Small. My daughter is Emerson Small. Um, she was born with a very rare genetic condition. Emerson was born on March 10, 2014. Um, she weighed five pounds, 2.5 ounces. Everything seemed normal. And then they started to see her later on that night. Um, she wouldn't accept a bottle, so she wouldn't feed. I remember them placing her into my arms and looking down at her and thinking, how could anything be wrong with this perfect little girl? And like your world just shatters. Started seeing the seizures after a while and then uh, infantile spasms. Just about a month, maybe just shy of a month. Uh, pretty much lived in the NICU. So we did further genetic testing um, and that's when it revealed the deletion and duplication of her two chromosomes. The other things that go along with her um, genetic condition are like developmental delays, she has seizures, um, she failed her newborn hearing screen, so we later found out that she had moderate to severe hearing loss. Um, she has some visual impairment. She uses the use of a walker wheelchair for mobility. She's had um, about 18 surgeries in her life. She sees a number of specialists um, from feet to mouth. It's so rare that basically we say that Emerson will write her own story and write her own book and we joke that someday maybe it will be called Emerson Syndrome so we just kind of like take it day by day and like whatever symptoms and diagnosis and whatever comes along with it we kind of just roll with it. I'm Jeff Frederick. Uh, my son Matthew is 13 and he has Down syndrome. So Matt is the youngest of our three kids. We didn't know before his birth that um, he had Down syndrome. So that was a surprise to us. Um, but you know, we just moved forward. The Gunderson staff was really supportive and provided a lot of resources for us. Um, you know, in his first year of life, he, lots, of, lots of doctor visits, you know, pneumonia, just some respiratory things going on there. After we made it through the first couple of years, he's been pretty healthy. He did have to actually have a, a, a small hole in his heart repaired. So through the years, yeah, he's done many therapies including music therapy, which Children's Miracle Network was wonderful to fund when we didn't have any other options for that. They do real specific things to help him in everyday living. By tying that in with music, it, it definitely seems to make sense. I really like the stuff that they do at music therapy. He's gotten OT, physical therapy, speech therapy over the years, both at school and at Gunderson, and some private options. He had a lot of physical and developmental issues to work through, for sure. You know, now he's 13, he's a big kid. We get out bike riding when we can, and, and that has been more of a challenge as he got older because he outgrew the little pull-behind, you know, bike, the bike trailer that he would normally sit in, and Children's Miracle Network um, helped provide a pull-behind bike that he could actually sit up and ride and pedal himself. But so now he's a sixth grader at Melrose Mindoro School District. He's healthy, just kind of living life right now. I'm Stephanie Peterson. My daughter is Mackenzie Peterson. Um, she has lysencephaly um, and she also has um, uncontrolled epilepsy called Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. Well, Mackenzie was born um, 
totally typical, nothing abnormal, normal pregnancy. I uh, didn't really know anything was different until about five months in when she had a seizure. Just holding her and, you know, a five month kind of having a seizure. So obviously we went to the hospital and they ran some tests and didn't really know what the issue was. And then came back to have more kind of tests and uh, genetic tests and came out that they she had this lysencephaly. So we went and saw the neurologist and I just remember him telling us that um, lysencephaly is pretty rare. So she has some parts of her brain that are um, cloudy looking like it's supposed to be around the edge and then she has some other parts that are very smooth. In the worst of cases the entire brain is smooth and those children usually don't live very long. Um, in the least of cases that aren't as severe um, they can go on to live normal lives and they just told us Kenzie seems to fall somewhere in the middle. It's been tough but you know and it's just little things where she you know with devices and being able to try to walk and get surgeries to help just make her life better. One of the major surgeries was her hip surgery. They form when you walk. Uh, so that was a major one where she was in a full body cast for, gosh, I want to say three months or something like that. It was bad. She was having a surgery to kind of redo her G-tube and then fix that. And she ended up having sepsis and she, it was tough. She was in pretty rough shape. We were down in Madison in the ICU for nine weeks. She was on a ventilator kidney dialysis, um, TPN for nutrition, pretty much every bodily system that can shut down, shut down. It just, it wasn't looking very good, but she is one incredibly tough cookie and um, fought her way back from that. We always joke that when Mackenzie decides to get better, it's time to get better. And she makes a very quick turnaround. Her next big challenge, we're looking probably this spring or early summer to do um, spinal fusion surgery for her. Then we'll have to go down to Madison for that where her spine will be fused to a rod. We do love the idea of Mackenzie being able to sit up straight on her own. She is very crunched down and dependent on her wheelchair to kind of straighten her out. So she's a very active kid and loves doing what her family does. So I think it will help her be more able to get around with us and do the things we love to do. Kids tell me all the time that we run into in public places that they're Kenzie's best friend and they, they love her, which I think is just so wonderful considering she is nonverbal. She obviously has an impact on other kids. Her journey's been long and hard and it definitely we could never have imagined all the stuff she's had to go through, but she's just a resilient, happy kid, and um, she's definitely taught us and her two brothers to just uh, learn to go with the flow and you know, just appreciate what you've got. When you're thrown into an uncertain situation like that, um, it you know, brings a lot of peace of mind to have an organization like that offering you support. Just takes that burden off of families um, and something they don't have to think about, whether it be meal vouchers or gas or even equipment or anything like that. Just those little tiny things that would wouldn't think would really matter, it, it does. Your lives are turned upside down and you, you can't always work through all of it. Lots of things are in turmoil, so to have that extra help from CMN can mean a lot. The playrooms that they have, the stuff to keep them busy, and even for some of the older kids, they've got like the video arcade machines for the older kids. When you see that it's a CMN hospital, you know that your child is getting the absolute best standard of care that there is. And one of the things that donating to Children's Miracle Network can do is to help a family like ours include Matt in everything that we do. I don't think they really realize how much their donation can affect somebody's life, but just by even a $10 donation, that is a toy or something for a child who's in the hospital. There's so many great charities out there, but even the best ones, you don't really know exactly where your money goes. But I love how CMN here highlights families like ours so you can actually see all the unique needs these families and kids have and you can see how your dollars are going to help us right here in this community. The money sticks local and goes to great foundations, uh, to amazing kids. There's just so many different areas CMN helps with and you probably know somebody or will know somebody who's benefited at some point. It's just a fantastic organization to be a part of and I just want people to know that your donation really does help make a difference in our kids' and our families' lives.